Los Angeles, to city planners, generally means the car, automobiles. It has some of the worst traffic congestion and some of the worst auto-oriented pollution in the country. LA tends to be a very image-conscious place, and the auto industry spends over $20 billion a year promoting automobiles. What would happen if transit agencies spent a similar amount promoting mass transit? If you look at the Los Angeles system, there's a ton of great service out there. Some of our bus lines carry more than, than entire rail systems in other cities. So there's a lot of success out there and there's a lot of great service. The key was trying to attract new riders and, and, and get people interested in the, in the system all over again. One of the key things in putting the, the group together and looking at communications was we wanted to make public transportation cool. responsible for all of the creative elements that are at customer touch points. Just to go back to 2003 when we really started our, our efforts, we had over 300 logos at the agency. Every department had its own logo. They wanted their own logo. They wanted their individual identity. Well, needless to say, to the customer and to the public, that was very confusing. What we wanted to accomplish was, was bring everything together, all the positives together, and then present the agency in a way that was favorable to the public and that not only took care of, of the uh, transit dependent, but also attracted more discretionary riders. That has been a very successful campaign for us. We call it our opposites or our problem solution campaign. We started off saying, you know, we really do want to position Metro as the solution. So we thought of all these different things that were problems and then we tried to make Metro and its, its logo be the solution to all of these problems in Los Angeles. I think the Naughty and Nice campaign is hilarious, showing that cars on the road are not so good and that the bus is like the savior or the hero right now. And I think that's really true. If you look at our fleet design, basically we've introduced bright, vibrant colors. It's California poppy, but most people would consider it orange. And then even for express lines, we have you know, a bright blue bus that we have out there. And um, it's, it helps us differentiate the service and identify segments for customers to choose from. I would say that's our single most successful effort has been rebranding of the fleet. This was really wonderful. Matchbox had never done a city bus. And they did this independently on their own. In fact, the first time they did it, it didn't have Los Angeles on it, but we asked them to add a little Los Angeles so that we could make sure people understood this is a Los Angeles bus. We also have a public art program that brings professional artists in to enhance our, uh, our stations. Uh, I think we have about 300 artists that we've commissioned to date that have incorporated their work throughout our system in really wonderful, often unexpected ways. When I first got here, we had 22% of our, our riders were discretionary riders. There were people who chose to use the system, so about one out of five people. Um, since we implemented a lot of these communications programs and redesigned our fleet, um, we've raised that up to 36%. Promoting mass transit more effectively, the image of it, marketing of it, could create a virtuous cycle where better image leads to more ridership, which leads to more demand for service, so more service and then the additional service then encourages more people to ride it. And this, is, this would be a great outcome. It's everything that you do that impacts ridership, and so it's how you present yourself, it's, it's the services you put out on the street, and it's um, you know, the, the public perception, and, and uh, more importantly, their consideration of using the service. And every indicator we've had, you know, looking at surveys and, and tracking what we've done, has been positive. Mm -hmm.